All right, guys, th thanks for sticking around the end of the day. I appreciate everybody not going home. Um, we are the last group of the day. Save the best for last year, okay? Um, we are Jasmine and J Jerome. I'm Jeremiah, and we are, project is called J J J Jewelry Box. All right, that, now I, I need everybody, everybody, okay? Come on, it's, we're, we should be home now, ready? J -j -j All right, there we go. <laughs> um, okay, so we started out talking about the project on Monday, and by Wednesday at eight o'clock, we still hadn't made a decision about what we were gonna do. We changed three times. We actually did the forums for a little while that they did and we, s we settled here. What we wanted to build is a dashboard for a customer interactive high-end um, sales department. We w you have all this great customer data and you build all these great customer profiles, but then you never use it. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to build a database that actually uses that information to help you sell to your clients better. What we didn't realize is that in order to build that data, you need data. You need products, you need customers, you need invoices, you need sales transactional histories. So guess what? We built an entire point of sale system. Somebody may call this a POS. <laughs> there we go, okay. It, it's a thinker. Um, the site structure was built in Node. We use Express. Um, we're using handlebars and SQLize to grab the data. Um, our front end is built in Materialize. We used Passport for login. Um, the app itself is um, built with a left navigation bar that's static throughout all the pages and the content on the right is in the body. Um, I think that's the main intro, so um, I'm gonna have Jasmine start going through some of the features. Um, Starting with login, do you want me to hold it for you? Or? Uh, sure. So when we're thinking about how an um, employee can be really efficient, we want we broke it down into two things: one, to have all of the company information in a central place, and then really make that information work for them. So customizing it to the user and the user profile. So I'm already in the database, so I'm going to log in. So right away, I can see that the dashboard is pulling in data based on my login. On the sidebar here, we'll, we have navigation links to clients and then products and invoices. So later on, Jerome will talk about the dashboard and Jeremiah will go through the invoices. But right now, I'm going to go and give a brief walkthrough about client and product creation. So on the clients page, we have a basic list of, table list of all the clients we have right now in the database. Let's look at John Kennedy. And we see that his, um, Jackie O is in his family. We have some basic information about his preferences. He likes rings, watches, Rolex. And the employee responsible for him is Jeremiah. So now let's say if I wanted to add a client, I have a little form here where I can start inputting their data and in the drop down is pre-populated with options. Um, we can also add family members from our existing database of clients. So, oh right, and we can also add an anniversary date for them. This little handy date picker pops up. Um, as well, my name would, would be tied to this form and this client. Um, for products, it's also a very similar feature. We have a table listing all the products. We can look at this Cartier ring. Um, we get basic price information, what materials, and a little description of it. And if we go to add a new product, um, it's also very similar to the client form. We're getting a pre-populated list from the product categories table, which is being related back to the product ID, each product ID of rings so we can select rings, necklaces, bracelets, and also begin to add information, um, quantity, price, so forth. So now Jeremiah is going to show us a little special feature we added for invoice creation. Okay, so going to invoices, this is kind of where all of the database and some of the coding, I'm going to talk about that briefly, came together. Um, so 
when you're building out a database, you have all these foreign keys. And in, in the invoice, you, this is an invoice table. Under there, you have line items coming from the line item table. On the line item table, you have a foreign key to the products table. On the invoice, you have a foreign key to the employee table and the customer table. So in order to pull all of this data from SQLize, it's a pretty crazy, um, it's a pretty crazy request. Okay. So uh, we are including all of the, let's see. In my API, so maybe we won't actually show it right now. But ultimately, you have to include tables within another table. So when you're relating the clients to the clients, you, we, there's lots of different relations set up, and you you have to. I had the relation. Oh, here it is. So um, on invoices, I'm relating users and clients to the invoices. I'm also relating line items, and then to line items, I'm relating products. So the API um, results for this is like, uh, for each invoice, it's a really crazy long product. Um, so if we go back to the product, it's right here. Um, creating an invoice, when you create an invoice, um, you have the employee goes in there automatically. We have the customers show up dynamically. It's not a search because we only have a few customers for now. It's something we'll add later. If I go to the client, then it brings up some information about them, their nickname. So while I'm actually doing the transaction with them, I have a little bit of information. I know that they don't have, he doesn't have a family listed in our system, but I do know that he likes Rolex watches. So although he might be buying a ring, I might tell him that we have a new Rolex watch in stock. Um, for product search, if you search for something that exists in more than one, you get more than one match. If you um, do something that doesn't exist, you said be more specific or or to find the product we're querying the database instantly I can add that to the invoice and then submit the invoice to create something new it brings us back to the invoices table and I can instantly see that Tiffany's engagement ring was just added um, that being said Jerome's gonna talk a little bit about login which brings us and then into the database and take it away Jerome all right, guys, so first I'm going to log us out just to go through the process again. Jasmine is actually our top associate, so we're going to use her profile. Okay, and then, <laughs> so we chose to use Passport, um, the local method, because, you know, unlike Facebook and uh, the login with GitHub, uh, we're actually querying our own database and matching up the username and password uh, submitted by the user on the front end here and matching it up with the uh, database information. If there is a match, then they're going to log us in. Um, so let's go ahead and log in there. And then you see here we have the uh, total sales, sales performance, uh, pending work orders and the customer satisfaction. All this is queried from the database uh, and calculated on the back end and then Passport uh, serializes and deserializes it and makes it available to use in handlebars on the front end. Um, we also have invoices here. Uh, again, just like those numbers before, it's um, calculated on the back end. What's it, what it's doing here is counting how many products in every tier is being uh, sold by the um, associate. So right now, Jasmine is very strong in luxury and high end, which is exactly what, uh, what you would want. If there was a, a situation where the sales associate had a lot of low end or mid tier sales, then that's something they would want to look at and try to improve. Um, you al also have tasks here. So as you complete tasks, you can check them off, add more tasks. And then below that, we have the clients. So Charles Bass, I don't know who that is really, but <laughs> that's your client. Yes. And that's actually a good point to bring up that it's her client because it's her user profile. On my user profile, you know, I might have Drake in uh, Jeremiah's. He could have, I don't know who your clients would be because I don't have access to your account. <laughs> and that's the whole point. <laughs> and then, um, 
In the future, some functionality we would like to add is um, actually use these buttons. So say a sales associate had a headset on, if we could create some kind of functionality to just click the button and it automatically calls the client uh, straight from the dashboard, I think that would you know, make things a lot easier. Um, also an email, uh, we click that button and it pops up. You just write an email really quick for the client. Um, also we wanted to add in uh, the pr a like promotion section so if a client you know two years ago they bought a gold watch one year ago they bought a gold watch we don't want a sales associate to have to remember these patterns by themselves uh, the system will be able to s pick up this pattern and say okay this client bought three gold watches in the past five years he's probably gonna want another gold watch so you know that clients gonna pop up in the promotions and say hey sell this guy a gold watch um, and yeah, that's the functionality we'd like to add at some point. We built it to be mobile responsive to a tablet um, because in these high-end places, no one's standing in front of a computer clicking stuff. They're walking around. Everything you can click is very clickable and actionable right from the device. The list of additional features that we wanted to add is days long building a point of sale system like this. We originally had work orders, we originally had user profiles so that you can add user information. Um, but we kept all that off now because for us the most important part and the selling part of this was that it was um, it is the informational aspect on the front end. The, 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 the dashboard is what sells this product. We did a lot of research on high-end point-of-sale systems, and they they're, they talk about their database and all that type of stuff. But you know these these are very superficial you know industries, and it needs to look nice and it needs to have monetary value to the uh, to the project. Um, so I think that's it. And one more time for the road, we are j j j. No 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 no. No, 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 this is not over yet. <laughs> Everybody. J -j -j -j. All right, there we go. Thank you. So I messaged you guys. For me personally, um, was what I talked about just listing out those invoices. That query, in order to foreign key relation through SQLize five different database tables and have it respond and run result and then show that on handlebars. I could show you the handlebars thing too. It's a loop of line items within an invoice. So that was, that was an extremely difficult part of the project. That was my first four hour night of zero progress whatsoever and I you know the next day I went to bed and got it at within 15 minutes I mean did you guys have anything specific that you talked about I think sequelize yeah Jasmine ended up was working on something with sequelize that she didn't even work all the way through querying you know multiple tables in a database yeah. um, it was a little bit tedious uh, but you know we figured it out and uh, putting those variables into the done function for passport and the one last thing that I just wanted to add real quick is the other reason why, why we went with the jewelry industry was because in my job I was actually contacted by a jewelry company saying this doesn't exist and we want to pay you to build it and the estimate ended up being around six figures, no joke, because it was building out a custom point of sale system. So there's, there are people out there in the industry that could potentially want this when it gets built out to to the full, you know, we did this in two weeks, you know, that's, that's, that, that project is, you know, three months or more. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, and the logo, that diamond is just that four J's. I just, it's the J from jewelry, so j j, -j jewelry I made it to a diamond. <laughs> I, if, if Ahmed didn't have the earphones in his ear, I'd drop the mic, but. I'd be messed up. One thing I was curious about, one client, can't, one sales rep can't see the other sales rep's clients? Yeah, exactly. Um, well, you, you can't. You 
can on the you can on the full clients page, <laughs> but on the dashboard. On the dashboard, we specifically don't want that to happen um, because when it comes to like a high-end jewelry company, uh, these clients have specific relationships with certain sales reps. So, you know, if you're buying something extremely expensive, you want to go back to the same guy. He knows your tastes. So that's why you only want to see your clients. You know, you don't want to be poaching your coworkers' clients. So we try to uh, divide it. But yeah, if you're out that day and somebody calls and asks for you, they can look at your information via the client search page. But on the dashboard, you just get yours. Awesome job, guys.